Let me tell you a story about what passion looks like. In April of 2020, it was announced that an online film festival would be taking place on YouTube. The We Are One global film festival featured films from over 35 countries, and one particular film caught my eye immediately. Watching the 2014 Ugandan movie Crazy World is an experience like no other. It's really, really intense and very violent. The plot is paper thin to make way for almost non-stop action, and surprisingly, non-stop comedy as well. The hilarious narration over the action is characteristic of the video joker style that is native to Uganda. Now you're gonna meet Dawudi Bisasu, Uganda's greatest commando, and a father. But I know what some people would be thinking when they watch this. Isn't it obviously a terrible movie based on the over-the-top dialogue, bad CGI, and messy editing? Well, yes, but it's also an energy-packed joyride from start to finish, and I had a really enjoyable hour watching a movie that combines ultra-violence with social commentary on Uganda's child sacrifice practices, as well as commentary on people who appear homeless and mentally unstable. Because I wanted to bring out the, 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 the other side of these madmen we see alongside the lords, how what they think, what they work, are real, are they really in our lives? So people might think that they're mad, others are not. I've, I've, I've had you know many friends who are like, yeah, they look mad, but they they reason more than even these so-called non-mad, whatever, mm -hmm. who are not mad. And then I realized just how special this movie was. On one hand, you don't hear about many movies or filmmakers coming out of Uganda, but in the past decade, there has been a lot of attention on the Ugandan film industry because of movies like Crazy World, specifically from the slums of Wakaliga, where the film industry is called Wakaliwood. Believe it or not, many low-budget films like Crazy World were made in these Wakaliwood slums for what is obviously very little money. These movies were written, directed, shot, and edited by one man, Isaac Nabwana. Nabwana shot to fame in 2010 when a trailer for one of his movies, Who Killed Captain Alex, went viral, attracting the attention of fans around the world, including American producer Alan Huffmanis. Nabwana and Wakali would have since been featured on the BBC, Great Big Story, Vice, and National Geographic, accumulating millions of very passionate followers in the process. Considering his background, saying that Isaac Nabwana is a self-taught filmmaker is a bit of an understatement. His desire to make movies started in his youth, but he didn't have any money or resources to make movies until he was 32 years old. Nabwana shot his films using handmade props made from scrap, got his friends and family to be the actors, made his own computer using spare parts, and taught himself to use Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Wow. Before long, movies were being churned out of Wakaliwood, which is gaining attention and support by the day. Because of one man, Wakaliwood became the shining light of the Ugandan film industry, and for good reason. Budgets for movies like Crazy World are commonly reported to be around 200 US dollars or less. I'll say that again, 200 US dollars. Can you imagine shooting a feature-length movie for $200? For reference, Avengers Endgame had a budget that was 178,000 times larger. That's what's so great about Crazy World, Isaac Nabwana, and Wakaliwood. They do so much with so little. Their resourcefulness, innovation, dedication, and passion are hallmarks of successful people, not just in the filmmaking world, but the world in general. Isaac Nabwana wanted to make movies, and he didn't let poverty, inexperience, or his unknown status get in the way. He got up and made those movies. And he doesn't make them just for fun, but with the ultimate goal of giving back to his community. I, I want to make, make it bigger, like on a big land and a studio that can teach generations and generations. A studio where everyone can come and shoot. 
That in itself is a great story, but the funny thing is, I think there are a lot of people around the world who are just like Isaac Nabwana, people with dreams or goals. The only difference is that they hold themselves back from working towards these goals. We let the fear of failure, of shame, or just the hustle and bustle of our lives convince us that it's not worth it, that we're better off continuing with our current lives. I myself am one of these people, and I think that's why stories like Isaac Nabuana's are so inspiring to me. Here is living proof that if you want to achieve a goal, it is possible even against impossible odds. You just have to work towards it by leveraging the resources you have and constantly learning along the way. Not everyone reaches their goal, but you never know what great experiences you pick up by trying. In 2019, the Toronto International Film Festival invited Isaac Nabuana and his talented collaborator VJ Emmy to present Crazy World to a live audience outside of Uganda for the first time. And watching this session really made me see the value of Isaac Nabuana's films. During the session, a Skype call was made between these Ugandan villagers and this Canadian audience. And despite the huge separation in distance and privilege, for a few minutes, these two communities connected around their mutual love for a movie. Wherever and however films are made, films connect people. They connect communities, they shine a light on a cause, an issue, or a whole new perspective. That's pretty amazing. And all it took was $200. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. I had such a good time making it and I plan on covering more movies from the We Are One Film Festival. I haven't even scratched the surface on Wakaliwood and its story, so check out the links in the description to support them and learn more. As always, if you like this video, then subscribe to the Maximum Hype channel and I will be back with a new video soon. So until next time, stay safe and I'll see you soon.